In spring of 2016, I got news that no one ever wants to hear. My father had taken his life, although not a decision I'd hope he or anyone would ever make. I've learned to love and accept him for it, and in turn to love and accept myself more too, and with surprising and humbling results. I know that just a few years ago, if someone had told me this story, once I got past the shock, I'd begin wondering, how would I get through that? What would I do to keep going? Well, the good news is the solution is closer than you might expect. It's something we all have, and we can relate to the solution in an even better way. There's a certain panacea that's said to help across our lives, something the Harvard Business Review called the single greatest driver of accomplishment, whether you're working to heal an emotional trauma or build something new in the world. And this panacea is grit, often defined as passion and perseverance towards a goal Grit has been all over headlines in recent years. In 2017, Forbes wrote an article titled, Why Grit is More Important Than IQ When You're Trying to Become Successful. And the Financial Times made a piece claiming, True grit is the predictor of success. In famous studies, grit scores predicted everything from the winner of the National Spelling Bee to perseverance at West Point Military Academy to graduation from Chicago public schools. So it sounds then grit is universally beneficial, but does everyone have it? Well, Psychology Today ran an article titled, Grit, what is it and do you have it? A headline that to me illuminates the all too common and dangerous view that grit is something reserved for the exclusive few. But. What I learned following my father's passing in 2016 and in the years since, I've come to view grit in a different light. And together with you, I'd like to offer a new definition, a new model for grit, so that grit may more fully become a great enabler for human potential and for all of us. If I ask you today, do you view yourself as gritty? I suspect you might hesitate to raise your hand and not just because you're humble, but because as its own word, grit is hard to relate to. It's abstract, a description of what we want, but not how to get there. Like a treasure map where grit is the X, but no line showing how to arrive. Certainly, we can agree. Some people have grit. Think of a single mom working multiple jobs day and night, year on end to support her kids. Or think of a soldier saying goodbye to their family far from home, facing their fears. Or think of an endurance athlete, putting mind over body to redefine just what a human can do. But if we ask these people if they view themselves as gritty, I suspect they might say no. Because what we see as grit in others often comes naturally to them and you. When you do something where others see grit, you may just be doing what you feel called to do. So is this really grit? Well, if we unpack grit into a few of its sub-traits, discipline, motivation, tenacity, even these foundational characteristics are descriptions rather than instructions. So how do you practice them? How would you embody grit if your loved one made the decision to depart? Or asked another way, when you get knocked down, what gets you back up every time? I think it's simple. Love and mindfulness. Love and mindfulness and together you get grit. Grit really started hitting headlines in 2016 when researcher Angela Lee Duckworth published her best-selling book called Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. In her research, grit cre in her research Duckworth created a model for grit that estimated it as a product of skill, talent and effort squared because you need effort to develop your skills and effort to apply them and her model shows that grit is a more accurate predictor of success than any other variable like age income uh, education gender but that's not the whole story because as its own variable grit actually accounts for just a medium to small impact and success and 
here's a key reason why. A piece to the formula that I think hasn't been factored in. Emotional context. Because as, you, as you've surely experienced, your personal best at any point varies based on your emotional state and your awareness and ability to improve that state. And what this means then is our ability to show grit or as I see it, to experience or express love depends on where we are and what we feel. Now, I'm an endurance athlete and when I'm racing, I can run forever from a place of love. But if my body is dehydrated or my feet are pained with blisters or my mind is focused on what's not working, then I'm not in a position to experience love and I won't have grit. And that's where mindfulness comes in. Now I invite you to view mindfulness as creating the conditions to experience love. This means taking care of your body and it means priming your mind to be open, receptive and giving. Mindfulness is transformative because when we live and play from a place of love, there are no limits to what we can do. So if you're looking for grit on your treasure map, I suggest you don't go chasing discipline or motivation. Those are the effects, not the cause. Discipline and motivation will naturally appear when you honor your why, your purpose, your calling, and you apply mindfulness to create the conditions to successfully honor your why. When my dad died, I was angry. And to process the emotions, I ran. In fact, I ran 25 marathons in 2017. While I was running, I had a lot of time to think, to consider what I learned from my dad, the good and the bad. I also reflected on how short life is. Any one of us could be gone tomorrow. This moment is the only thing we're promised. I began thinking, what will I do with this one short life to truly make it count and enjoy myself, to live from a place of love and gratitude. Psychologists call this po process positive reappraisal, reinterpreting negative experiences to find their positives. It reduces our perception of pain, but I encourage you to think bigger than just silver linings. This isn't about seeing the upsides. It's about choosing to experience and express love and to find love in your way, even in the most challenging circumstances. So I found love by running, pushing my limits, running marathons, then double marathons, then 145 miles nonstop, running first from a place of anger and later from a place of gratitude. I realized when I'm powered by love and mindfulness, anything is possible. So following this idea, I decided I would row across the Atlantic Ocean by myself, a gift of love to myself and to the world. And this project, the United World Challenge, has tested me in ways nothing else ever has, including my dad's passing. And this project, long before I lose sight of shore, has required more grit from me than I even knew was possible. Accepting and welcoming every perceived setback from sponsors offering me over 30k and then backing out due to politics to my recent decision to delay my row after three years of planning and publicly announcing a pivot from planning the atlantic to now rowing the pacific every setback and my relentless push forward is not motivation it's not discipline it's not drive and it's not grit at least not as we define it today it's love and mindfulness remembering my why. In summer of 2016, I was an intern with Deloitte. And at that point in my life, I viewed grit as discipline and motivation and drive. And that's just what I did. Grit my way through the hardship. But to accept and grow from this loss, I had to redefine grit. Love for my dad love for the gift of my life and mindfulness for the things that make me experience and express love. No matter where we are in life, we all face setbacks and we all want grit. So how do we cultivate it? It really is simple. 
love what you do or fall in love with why you do it. And with every step, every stroke, create the conditions for love to show up. It's easy to see the setbacks. It takes courage and vulnerability to look beyond. But beyond, you'll find all the things you're grateful for. And there's always something. Those around you will look in awe as they see what you accomplish. They'll say, she's so motivated. He's so disciplined. I could never do that. Little do they know, you're just following your heart. Others will see grit and you will just feel love. This gift of grit is inside of us all. You were born for it. And this is our common denominator. Thank you.